If you turn to your Bibles, to the book of Psalms, today's scripture will be read from the NIV Bible. The scripture is 62, Psalm 62, verse 5. Psalm 62, 5. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV Bible. The scripture reads, My soul wait. I'm sorry, excuse me. This is this is from the King James Version. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Certain word that I was looking for. There's always found in the King James Version. I got this new new over here. They don't give me everything I need. What I'm looking for can be found in the King James. It says, My soul, wait thou only upon God for my expectation. Somebody say, expectation is from Him. Father God, Lord, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for this honor, for this privilege, Lord, to be here, Father God, to be in your sanctuary, Father God, Lord, to hear a word from you today. Father God, Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for Choosing us to understand your love, Father God, for choosing us to understand your power, Father God, Lord. So now I ask that you decrease me, Father God, decrease all of us, Father God, Lord. Clear our mind and our hearts, Father God, from anything that will prevent your word from taking root in our heart. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Father God, Lord. We ask that you bless this message. We ask that you bless the hearers of this word as well as the doers. It's in your son Jesus' name. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we say amen. amen. Please be seated. Thank God for Pastor Hennessy. All my fellow believers of the gospel and full pit. Thank God for all of you and visitors. You know, I, I wanted to start this uh, this message. I, I got this testimony up here, and I was just going to find a testimony somewhere. And, and, and I said, well, I'm just going to let the spirit move. And whatever happens at the beginning of the service, I'm going to find a way to kind of fold it into the service oh again. God, Brother Ken Staples got up and gave up. Wonderful testimony Amen. about what's happening over in Haiti. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm using, that's what I'm using. Then, Sister Betty Green saying, I am a living testimony. I said, that's what I'm going to use. That's, that's the one I'm going to use. Because, see, I love testimonies. I really do love testimonies. I, I love hearing about people in a faraway land that, that's going through something that, 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 that need to be delivered from something. And, and I love hearing how God showed up and delivered them. I, I love hearing about disasters or people who was in accidents or got through diseases or bad relationships, I just love to hear testimonies. Because when we hear testimony, we get to hear God's brilliance. We get to hear about God's genius. We get to hear about God's sovereignty. When we share a testimony, we get to share the goodness of God. Amen? We get to show how he shined in places where we only saw darkness. How he showed up in times where nobody else would have, even if they wanted to. Amen? You see, when we testify, we testify to the fact that God is indeed omnipotent and omnipresent. And as witnesses, we have encountered God's power and his mercy. So actually, we don't have the right to hold back on our testimonies. Because, see, they're not ours anyway. Testimonies are to glorify God. And so as God's children commissioned to be the salt of the earth, really don't have the right to hold back on our testimonies. Somebody needs to hear what God is doing in your life. Somebody needs to know how Jesus has changed your life. Somebody has needs to know how the Holy Spirit has came in your life and changed your mind and changed your attitude and changed the way you see things, changed how you talk to people and changed the conversation. Somebody needs to hear this testimony. But that's only if you know him. You see, when you know God, you got a testimony. Amen. I look for my testimony. Every day I walk out the door, I'm looking for it. I'm I'm looking around in the trees. I see I see a flower growing. I see something on the tree, I, and I see God in it. I look for it because the Bible tells me that God is in all things. He says one body, one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one Lord in all through all. So I look for God. I look for my testimony everywhere I go. Time I walk out the door, I'm looking for him. Searching for him in everything I do because I have an expectation. And today I want to share with you what God has given me about expectation. So today, this message is simply titled, Expect God. All right. 
David writes, my soul waits thou only yes, sir. upon God. Yes, sir. For my expectation is from him. Oh, yeah. If you remember, David was the same guy in the 23rd Psalm who says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, the reason why David didn't have to want for anything is because his expectations was already in God. Many times we find it difficult to wait on the Lord. Come on. Yeah, we know the scripture says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Because they shall mount up with wings as eagles. It says that they shall run and not be weary. The Bible says that they shall walk and not faint. But that's waiting on the Lord. And oftentimes, quoting scriptures about waiting on the Lord can be a whole lot easier than actually waiting on the Lord. But see, when you when your expectation is you see, it's not waiting that's the problem. We all know how to wait. We wait when we ain't trying to wait. We wait in traffic. We wait on the phone. We wait for somebody to answer the phone. We wait for somebody to hang up the phone. We know how to wait. We wait for our favorite TV shows. We wait for our favorite loved ones. Some of y'all in the audience right now waiting to come home. Amen? Okay, I ain't going to hear me out of it. But see, when your expectation is in God, you are guaranteed His promises in everything you do. Everywhere you go, every conversation you have. When your expectation is in God, you can bet He will show up around every corner, in every book, every movie. Every story, situation, conversation, good or bad, God is going to show up. Amen. When you love God, you can wait on Him. Amen. When you love God, you can expect from Him. Oh, yes. And then the trouble, no hardship, persecution or famine, nakedness or danger, sword, neither death nor life, not angels nor demons, not today, tomorrow, powers, nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creations that will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, it is a love that binds us by grace and mercy. It is a love that promises provision and redemption. It is a love that promises salvation and hope from the love of God that is in Christ. And with this promise of love and hope, we have the right to expect from God, just like David did. Now, I will have failed you all if I have left you leaving, left you believing that expect God is just another catchy slogan. We've heard name it and claim it. We've heard what would Jesus do. And, and, and I praise God for these easy to remember phrases and slogans because they all point to God love in some kind of way. But today, this is more than a slogan. This is more than a sermon, even. Rather, an appeal to change the way you think. Amen. By changing your understanding and shifting your perspective. You see, it's where you're standing when you see a situation that determines your perspective. Amen? Amen. Many of us have pondered the riddle about the glass half full versus half empty. And somebody said, if, if you see the glass half empty, then you're a pessimist. And everything you see is negative. Just a bitter beggar. Don't see nothing good in nobody. They expect the worst out of everything. But if you see the glass half full, he said, then, 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 then you're what they call an optimist. Amen? And, and everything you see is positive because you're so focused on what you do have, you don't even miss what's missing. Amen? See, expect God is a philosophy. Paul tells us in Romans 12, too, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So I pray this word today will forever change you as you expect God. Yes. See, this philosophy or mindset is a way of thinking that promises hope in all situations. It ensures that the glory of God will take precedence over all things. We all have expectations. But there are questions we should consider when dealing with expectations. I got three questions. I'm going to keep it straight to the point. I'm a, if y'all can just write down these three questions and uh, follow me with this. This is, this is the outline right here that I got. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous right now because it, I'm so full with this thing. 
And, when, and every time I talk to somebody about it, I, I, I go everywhere with it. So what I did, I, I wrote three simple questions. And we're going to look at who are we expecting from, what are we expecting, and how do we expect? See, earlier in the book of Psalms, we saw that David's expectation was in God. And throughout the scripture, we see God's people expecting from God, expecting provisions and miracles, yeah. or simply expecting God to uphold his word. Come on. Yeah. And time and time again, we see God validating his sovereignty and his power through his revelations. In the Gospels, we see a lady stricken by blood issue, Come on. healed by her faith. Come on. Not the touch, not the garment, right. not even the words of Jesus Christ himself, but by an expectation she had, an expectation to be healed. You see, when you have an expectation, you have a motivation. Amen. The Bible tells us that she was stricken for 12 years. Dr. Luke tells us in chapter 8, verse 43, that no one was able to heal her. I can imagine she had lost a little drive after 12 years. How many of y'all know that sometimes when things get old, we start to lose hope and start to learn how to live with it? And my job, that's what that's what we call a workaround. See, when we when we trying to fix a tool and we can't really fix the problem, we learn how to work around it. It's not the preferred method, but we learn how to work around it. And a lot of times we have things in our life that we just learn how to work around because we've been dealing with it so long. Amen. And so that's what she was. So for 12 years she had this issue and nobody could heal her, but she had an expectation. I can imagine she learned how to live with her blood issue. Twelve years is a long time to put up with a sickness or a bad relationship or disease or unforgiveness or any kind of issue that's unpleasant in the sight of God that's keeping you from doing God's will. Talk about waiting on the Lord. This lady went twelve years, I'm sure, in pain and agony, seclusion probably. Probably didn't have no visitors, probably didn't have no friends. We didn't read that she had anything but her faith. Well, right of Hebrews said that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. He said faith is the evidence of things unseen. Yes. This lady had an expectation, y'all. Yes. How many of y'all know that expectations motivate us to do everything? Yes. You wouldn't do anything if you didn't have an expectation, amen? You wouldn't pray if you didn't expect anything from God. You wouldn't talk to anyone if you didn't expect a response. Some of us wouldn't be nice to each other if we didn't expect anything in return.